Well, this is so exciting. I got a package in the mail. I wonder what it is. Wink, wink. Of course I know what it is, but I wanted to do an unboxing, and I will do that first. It's a rather small package. It's about eight inches wide. So let's open it up and see what it is. There's a clue by the person who sent it. Lotharek. So let's see what's inside. Oh, by the way, check out the uh, cool postage stamps. Uh, how do you open this box? Alright, fine. I wanted to make a nice opening, but... Let's see what it is. It's a little box. Smaller than I expected. Again, six and a half inches, three and a half inches, about a one inch and a half high. It's got a bunch of LEDs, card slot, some buttons. Hmm, they could be joystick ports, power switch, USB, USB, probably speaker, and VGA. This is something called the Mist computer. This is a reconfigurable computer that was originally targeting Atari ST re-implementation re -implementation in an FPGA and that is what the ST at the end of MIST, M-I-S-T stands for. If you're familiar with Minimig or even the Chameleon 64, it's pretty much the same thing. And I said it was originally targeted to re-implement uh, the Atari ST, but apparently there are other cores that you can run. And as I showed you briefly, this was produced by Alatharek, and I'll try to put some links into the video. And you can go to his website. He's uh, very big into Atari 8 and 16 bits. Uh, he's got a lot of cool things. So what I need to do is set this thing up. So I'm going to pause the video. I have to prepare the uh, SD card, hook up the VGA, and so on. So I'll be back shortly. Alright, so preparation took me a little longer than I expected. I don't have a spare USB keyboard, so I had to take it off of my regular PC. And I prepared an SD card. But actually, before I do any of that, I'd like to look at the box a little bit more. Um, this is a really nice box. It's some kind of metal, probably aluminum, but it's machined very well. There's no labels on the box, but uh, this is a very nicely designed and machined box. Uh, it just reeks of quality. I mean, I know this is a hobby. But uh, you can put a lot of effort into your hobbies of making these things. Um, so, anyways, what I did is prepare an SD card. You need to download the core file, uh, the Atari ST core file. There's also an Amiga core file. Then you have to get a TOS image. And I have an Atari ST. Uh, with TOS 2.06 so I dumped the ROM into a file and made, made an image out of it. Uh, 2.06 would be the greatest version of TOS you can use. TOS 3 is for the TT and TOS 4 would be for the Falcon but this is only uh, this box only emulates an STE uh, or not emulates I shouldn't say that but anyway you should put the 
SD card in there and on the back is the VGA cable for power this is just one of those ubiquitous phone chargers generic USB chargers with a micro not a mini but a micro USB adapter goes into the back of the box here and then plug this into here and then plug it into the power outlet and you take a USB mouse standard USB mouse goes in one of the USB ports and you take a USB keyboard like this oh, this is my uh, if I can find it this is my Logitech G10 is the keyboard I use on my PC. Don't have a spare USB keyboard just floating around. USB keyboard. And that goes into one of the USB ports. And then go to the monitor here first. Turn on the monitor. And then turn on the missed computer and you can see once the screen goes in this is a Atari startup screen surprise surprise because this is TOS, TOS 2.06 it will look exactly like an ST computer or an STE not a Falcon or a TT. Press escape to bypass that. Now this is a vanilla dump of TOS. Don't know how to manage disk images or things like that. I know you can make disk images, mount disk images, even hard drive images. Hard drive images will require the hard drive, hard drive driver. And it's taking a long time because it's probably doing like an ST does, trying to read off of the floppy before it gets the gem. And there it is in gem. There's your busy B cursor. And it looks like it started in ST high, which is fine, uh, monochrome. I don't know what the uh, funny pattern is. Let's see if I can change it to. Yeah, I don't know why I can't change it to ST medium or ST low. Sort of document somewhere that it would let you do that. There's no floppy in the floppy drive, so it'll come up with an error. Let's say cancel. But this is. If you've ever used Atari, this is it. This is a, a real live Atari. I don't know how compatible it is. The wiki indicates there's a pretty high level of compatibility. Uh, I don't know why the blitter is disabled. A lot of this I'm not too sure about. I did read the wiki. Not completely in depth, but uh, need to go through it so um, I mean it looks pretty good so far now on the front of the missed computer if I come down to here turn on the light so you can see there are some buttons oh, that, that left button did a reset so let's wait for it to go back into TOS. Yes, yeah, so it's going to be a little slow. Yeah, well, that's
that's doing there. Let's see what the other button might do. Let's press this button. Oh, look. The middle button is a on-screen menu. And it says monochrome. So let's look at the options. Let's see. Storage. No disk, no disk. Hard drive, no disk. System. 4 meg. Let's make it 14 meg. Huh. Uh, toss image. I could put multiple versions of toss on here. Uh, I did download one of the free versions of toss. No cartridge, turbo off, whatever. Video. Pal mode. Screen mono. There we go. And firmware and core. Let's exit. Exit. We're back at the ST menu or ST screen. This should boot into ST low resolution. wait for it to pretend that it's reading a floppy that drive that doesn't exist. And this is ST low resolution. As soon as the busy bee goes away. And let's set the oops. I don't want to do that. There's no drive. So I can't read or save. Cancel that. Let's go into Preferences, ST Medium, press OK, it's going to reboot. Let's see if I can remember how to bypass the floppy drive on this. So it boots a little faster. Should have come up with the Atari logo by now. know what that's all about. Oh, okay. It's just taking long again because it's trying to find a disk that doesn't exist. Alright, now we're in SD high mode. I can't do anything other than boot it and look at gem and, and play around with gem and the different menu options because I don't have any floppy images or any hard drive images. I'll play around with that a little bit later on. Uh, one thing I'm going to do in a moment, I'm going to open it up and look at what's inside of it. I hope he doesn't mind. I'm going to actually pause the video while I do that. Okay, I took off the cover. Uh, it was a little bit of uh, finagling because the cutouts for the joystick ports protrude a little bit, but that's what these are. These are joystick ports. They are Atari 2600 ports, not STE ports. And uh, I mean, I'm not going to go through this at all. Uh, I mean, it just looks nice. Uh, there is supposed to be a MIDI expansion board, you'll, if you're familiar with Atari STs, one of the bigger selling points is the MIDI port, and there is no MIDI port on this, but apparently he has or he will have an expansion for the MIDI port, and it looks like I think the board will sit here. There's an expansion header here. These are probably like debug headers, but all these, all these uh, ports and whatnot are documented on the wiki. And I don't want to touch it too much because with my luck I'll static something and blow it up. He has a provision for an external 
uh, 5 volt adapter right there so you don't have to use the USB port for power but one, there's really no issue with that once you start using one of these things I mean if you've bought a cell phone in the past five years smartphone you've probably got one of these if not you know, buy them on the web for a few bucks anyways that is the mist computer it is an Atari ST computer implemented in an FPGA and it's very nice it looks extremely well produced be looking forward to playing with this alright thanks for watching